Hi, I'm Allie Druffel and I'm a graduate student in the Department of Plant Pathology here at NC State and you are watching NC State Forest Pathology Channel on YouTube. Today's video covers fusarium wilt disease in the mimosa tree and how to do experiments to study fusarium wilt in the lab and greenhouse. Let me show you some images of the disease as it progresses in mimosa. Fusarium wool is a common and lethal disease of mimosa, also commonly known as silk tree. In the United States, this disease occurs in the east from New York southward and also Louisiana, Arkansas, and California. Fusarium wool is caused by the fungus Fusarium oxysporum forma specialis perniciosum. The fungus colonizes and clogs the tree's vascular tissue and interferes with the movement of plant sap. This results in rel relatively rapid tree death. The first readily, readily noticeable symptoms of mimosa wilt are yellowed, stunted, and wilted leaves on one or several branches in early to midsummer. Later in the summer, the affected branches may prematurely defoliate, as you'll see in this image. Yellowed and wilted leaves continue to appear on more branches throughout the summer and fall, although in some cases a tree may die within a month of initial appearance. As the disease progresses, cracks begin to appear in the bark. Here. In some cases, gum or a white frothy liquid with a fermented odor may exude from cracks. Sometimes a tree survives to the next growing season, but the new leaves will be stunted and yellowed, and the tree will continue on a relatively rapid decline toward death. After the above ground portion of the tree dies, roots may still be alive and shoots may continue to sprout from the base of the trunk for some time. All isolates of Fusarium oxysporum that attack plants cause vascular wilt disease, as we saw in the previous images. However, isolates of Fusarium oxysporum are quite specific to their host. Thus, the Fusarium attacking mimosa is Fusarium oxysporum forma specialis perniciosa, while the isolates attacking watermelons is Fusarium oxysporum forma specialis nibium. Interestingly, you cannot see microscopic differences in the isolates of the different forma specialis. They look alike morphologically with an intense blue color and an agar culture of the fungus. It's just that isolates of a given form of forma specialis can only attack its given host. Now that you have some background on fusarium wilt diseases, we are going to move into the lab where I can show you how to work with fusarium cultures so that we can prepare and occupy for greenhouse experiments. For demonstration purposes, I will be using the pathogen fusarium oxysporum forma specialis nibium that causes fusarium wilt in warm blood. So once we receive an infected seedling, um, you would see symptoms like uh, yellow chlorosis of the cotyledon leaves or maybe a little wilting. We would take the seedling and remove all the soil, but we also need to remove any other pathogens that might be lifting uh, on the plant roots or the vascular tissue outside of the plant. And so we'll dip it in a 5% bleach solution and then uh, distilled water. Then we take it and dice it up, the vascular tissue up into cross sections and play the cross sections onto a fusarium specific medium and let that grow out. Uh, so that's what you can see here. We have these little white halos that are already developing. With these little halos that you just saw um, surrounding the vascular tissue, we would then take these once they've grown out enough and take the newest growth of the mycelium and uh, replate those using a bore tool onto new PDA um, and let those grow out and then we, from there we would do a single spore isolation to make our canidial suspension. So I will demonstrate how to do this next under the laminar flow hood. To ensure that the correct single spore is isolated for FLN, we kept at one mil of sterile distilled water uh, on the pure culture PDA with mycelial growth. Branching off from the hyphae are these canidia pore structures which bear the canidia that we want to isolate. When we pipette this water onto the mycelial growth, this vigorously washes the canidia from the canidia pore structures, putting them into spore solution. On a water agar plate, as you're going to see in a minute, we pipette 90 microliters of sterile distilled water and then 10 microliters of the agitated spore solution from our clean fusarium culture. We tilt this to the side, give it time to dry out overnight, then we look beneath the microscope to identify a single uh, macrocanidia spore. Once we've isolated our spore, we can then transfer that plug onto a new plate, wait for three to five days for new mycelial growth, then, then take a plug or two of that and use your borer tool and add that to a 500 milliliter flask of quarter potato dextrose broth. This flask will then be shaken on agitation table for one or two weeks at 200 RPMs until it turns to a pinkish,
color from stress response. So once the isolate is grown on media, um, then new mycelial growth can be taken using the board tool again and then put into a five milliliter uh, flask of potato dextrose broth or quartered uh, potato but dextrose broth and you put on shakers to um, kind of disrupt the weight up the mycelium. And so this is what this is about the pigment that you would expect initially with the your inoculum at the beginning and then we're going to see what it would look like about two weeks later. So here you can see the inoculum that's been on the shakers for about two weeks and it has this wine punch like color and it's very different video. So as we left off you saw the inoculum on the shakers. Uh, from there we took uh, concentrated, or we took the conidia from the inoculum and put that on a hemocytometer and counted how many conidia were in a concentrated area, then diluted that uh, to get our spore solution. Using the spore solution, we inoculated the seedlings that you'll see here uh, with 100 mils uh, within, with a universally susceptible host to uh, Pisterium oxysporum forma specialis nibium. Uh, the variety is called black diamond. And we uh, we inoculated with the seedlings when they were four weeks old, and as you'll see here, it was a high inoculum density, so the symptoms are very severe. This isn't common in a, in a commercial practice. But so you see here, here's the vascular tissue um, towards the crown of the plant. There, it's constricted. This is due to the plant's response to create tyloses, which are enlarged parenchyma cells which blockade the pathogen from traveling any further uh, up the vasculature of the plant. And this, uh, because of this constricting, water is unable to uh, travel through the plant system to get to the foliage of the plant. Therefore, the plant cannot perform photo uh, photosynthesis properly. This causes this brownish, uh, grayish, dull color that you see here on the plant's foliage. Um, like I said, this is a high inoculum density, so this isn't usually as common, but this plant probably will die. And here, this is the you see unilateral wilting, the wilting of one side of the plant where it's completely necrotic. And then uh, this plant still seems like to be holding on a little bit. This is more common in, in um, a naturally inoculated field setting, the unilateral wilting. Um, and so I'll show you how to do an inoculation using the pipette boy. Towards the base of the plant, and now the conidia will travel, will be attracted to the root exudates and be uh, translocated through the root system up through the vascular tissue, and then uh, colonized within the vascular tissue, causing this um, this wilting of the plant. And as you see here, here's our control and our inoculated. Um, so now you've seen how we inoculate our watermelon seedlings and you can see that the fungus lives within the soil and it has resting structures known as comedospores. And these comedospores can germinate and infect the roots which is the, how uh, the mimosa tree is infected in a natural setting. So this concludes our segment on Fusarium Will. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'm signing off. Go watch more videos on the Forest Mythology YouTube channel.